Hi YouTubers, uh, today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about fossilisation and something else as well, but we'll get to that later. Now, to start with, I have here a glass of water. Very simple experiment. Looks lovely and clean and it's um, um, normal tap water. Uh, tap water of course does contain various things, but uh, what I've got here, if I can just get it, bear with me. There's sugar, water, pop the two in, ah, it's a noisy bit, let's talk amongst yourselves for a minute, you can stir, and get stirring away, and lo and behold, in time, it's going, it's going. well anyway, we'll show this in a minute, and of course, the sugar will dissolve into the water. Right, why did I do that? Well, it's a very simple experiment. Water, and it's clearing now quite nicely, um, contains all sorts of things. It's not just water. And in particular, in the sea, I mean, obviously salt as well would uh, be just as good as the sugar, which is now dissolving, <laughs> mostly. Really there. Dissolved. But of course, if you actually want the sugar back, you can evaporate the water. And um, evaporate that water, and I'll get that spoonful of sugar back. <clears throat> Fairly simple experiment. I'm sure you all understood that. So the water is full of minerals. And these minerals. You see also, if you were, for instance, to boil a kettle, you do find the uh, furring up of the lime scale in a kettle um, settling and, and, of course, lime scale. These minerals that are deposited, and this is basically what happens with fossilization. Over a very long period of time, these minerals build up, are compressed, and they fossilize. The atoms associated with, say, living organisms, um, they're replaced by the minerals, um, obviously within the water. So, in addition to that, the surrounding sediments will, of course, also find that they are being mineralized as well, which is why we find these sort of mudstones like limestone and chalk, etc. Okay, so what I have here is something that's fossilized obviously it's an ammonite if i turn it around uh, as you see probably slightly better there it is an ammonite this was found in somerset um, comes from sort of jurassic period um, but it has in fact been cut into two so we have the two parts now what you find inside is not actually the original animal but in these sort of holes that appeared from where the animal vacated through decay, you have of course got this build-up, this wonderful build-up of quartz. So I don't know if you can see it there. It's very polished, so so you've got a build-up of quartz, and very splendid it is too. And you do find this in uh, quite a lot of areas. Whenever there's a hole in the ground or some something which has space within it, um, volcanic fissures, etc. There will be seepage of water, and this water will be build up um, these minerals as the as the water seeps through, deposits these minerals, and we get this uh, crystallization, etc. In the same way, we have this uh, crystallized ammonite with quartz. We have here. This is a piece of quartz, also, but this is amethyst. It's called amethyst basically because of its colour, but it is a quartz. You see, picking up all the colour there, wonderful stuff. So, and if we look on this side here, we can see that there, this was where the seepage would have come through and would have built up inside the empty space within. It's falling apart on me, so I'll put that one down. Um, tiny bits of quartz, am amethyst quartz. All right. So why am I telling you all this about fossilisation? Well, I wanted to go on to something else and give you a sort of basic idea of how it works. And I want to have a look at the uh, famous White Cliffs of Dover. 
the famous chalk cliffs. Um, chalk, of course, that uh, we all know about, that permeable chalk. Um, it's quite a soft, soft uh, stone. And it's hundreds, hundreds of feet, hundreds of meters high, these cliffs. And they are made up almost entirely of living material. Now, if you go back 100 million years, you're in a period known as Cretaceous. Up to about 65 million years ago, famous for the dinosaur extinctions, etc., we had shallow seas. Uh, these shallow seas mainly caused with the very hot times. Um, much of the oceans encroached on the earlier land masses and these shallow seas appeared uh, in various areas for obvious reasons. Now, as I say, at that time, Britain um, would have been somewhere around about um, the same latitude as Greece is today because of the tectonic plate movements. But, however, they're made up almost entirely of very small microscopic creatures called coccoliths. These coccoliths are still around today. They, they're like they're part of the ocean's plankton. They have, in times of algal blooms, for instance, that we get even today, they do produce in vast numbers. And when they die, they settle like dust onto the uh, floor of the oceans. Now, we know there's shallow seas at the time. If, you, if these things settle in fairly deep oceans, uh, they do, in fact, just get absorbed into the rest of the, rest of the water. Uh, they, they dissolve. So, it, the shallow seas, these things were dropping down, and about half a millimetre a year of dust would have built up. That would take around about 180 coccoliths deep. So, so they're quite, uh, quite a lot of them. But trillions upon trillions upon trillions of these coccoliths over the years, basically descended a sediment and built up these chalk cliffs. It, uh, they, they sort of formed a sort of lime-like soup, a white lime type soup, at the, uh, at which eventually fossilized and, and dried out. And in amongst, in amongst these, uh, these seas also were, of course, things like uh, our friends here, the Ammonites, and, and several other creatures. Flint is very often found in amongst chalk it's one of the most important things. The reasons it's been was mined for many, many years was in fact for the flint more than the chalk. So uh, flint itself is sort of silica based and comes from the decomposition of things like sea sponges. These would have sort of congregated in sort of again a sort of slimy soup and flint formed instead of chalk. So it's interspersed amongst them. We also find amongst them different types of ammonites at different levels, um, different species at different levels of creatures. So obviously they all fit in nicely to the evolutionary chain and as such they should be a creationist nightmare because they are factual things that, uh, that do prove life existed a hundred million years ago at least and for many millions of years. So uh, I'll put some pictures up on the, so hopefully you've seen them by now. And basically that's all I wanted to say for today, but uh, have a think about it. White Cliffs of Dover, built up almost entirely from life. Marvellous. Peace.